Well, we're located right now at 2nd and Main Street in Louisville, Kentucky. When Louisville was founded, it was essentially, uh, I say, a child of the river, which is right down the hill there. Uh, Louisville was founded, of course, in 1778, grew very slowly, uh, but from its beginnings, it was a slave city, and African Americans in slavery played an increasingly important role here. Because Kentucky did not support cotton agriculture, the climate was just simply too cold, Kentucky developed into what some would call a slave trading state. Uh, you had uses of African Americans here, but you also had a number of African Americans who were sold off every year down the river. That's where the term comes from. Um, and on this street, roughly from 2nd Street all the way down to 8th Street, on uh, Main and Market, you had roughly 8 to 10 slave pens during the 1830s and 1840s. Uh, this is where enslaved African Americans would be kept uh, for shipping farther down the river to the cotton states. And this is one of the ways that Kentucky, and especially Louisville, maintained the profitability of slavery uh, during the latter part of the antebellum period. Uh, Kentucky was divided during the Civil War, and Louisville was probably as divided as any part of Kentucky. Uh, because Louisville was the major population center on the river, uh, it became a major installation for the Union Army. At one time or another, uh, you might have had over 100,000 Union troops here. Uh, William Tecumseh Sherman uh, was commander here for a while. He and Grant met to discuss strategy for the end of the war. This is a very, very important place. African Americans played many different roles during the Civil War in Louisville. Uh, you had fugitive slaves who enlisted in the army, uh, some local African Americans who joined the army, uh, and plus, perhaps most uniquely, you had the local free black community that embraced these soldiers, uh, providing them with medical care, food, clothing, and of course, over time, their families gathered here under federal policy, and there was a 10-acre black refugee camp near where we're standing right now at 18th and Broadway. So you had the wives and the children of the black soldiers. You had a black man named Thomas James from uh, Rochester, New York, who was superintendent of the camp. And he, along with some black soldiers, emptied out all the slave pens on the uh, Main Street and Market Street that we saw earlier. Uh, so a very unique experience. In many ways, the Civil War was one of Black Louisville's finest hours. Now we're at 4th and Chestnut Street in Louisville again, looking to the south. Uh, in my youth, this was the main shopping district of Louisville. Uh, and of course, it was a segregated shopping district. African Americans could buy, but not try on clothes, uh, could look at restaurants, but not sit down and have a meal. Uh, we had some early demonstrations around 1957-58, testing segregation here, but it's really in 1961, the winter of 1961, that there was a major campaign against segregation here. We called it the Nothing New for Easter campaign. Uh, and you had high school students, some college students, some adults uh, who would demonstrate here literally every day uh, in February, March, into April. 1961. Uh, ultimately, this campaign and a voter registration campaign broke the back of segregation in Louisville. By 1963, we had a public accommodations ordinance ahead of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. We're standing at 10th and Muhammad Ali streets right now. Muhammad Ali was once called Walnut Street. Uh, so when we think of old Walnut Street, this is the area. Uh, we're also standing essentially in the area where Black Louisville was born. Uh, in the late 1820s, two young African Americans uh, who had inherited a little bit of money were able to get a young white woman to actually sell them some property that was then on the outskirts of town. Uh, this is that property here going farther back up to about 7th Street. 
and of course it's on this property that the free black community of Louisville took root. By the 1850s you had about eight independent black churches in this area, uh, a small but a thriving community, and of course this is what gave African Americans in Louisville their distinctive community. Uh, in later years, of course, this community would grow. It would never be entirely black until after about 1940, but it would become predominantly, predominantly so. And of course, by the 30s, 40s, and 50s, this was the center of Louisville's black business district as well. What we call Old Walnut Street uh, with the great nightclubs and Joe Lewis and Duke Ellington and all those people hanging around. Uh, a lot of local color. Uh, your black professional class is based here largely. Uh, nowadays, of course, it's a struggling community uh, with a housing project on one side, uh, apartment complex on the other side, uh, and we're, we're struggling with the community to try to rebuild it. But this is where Black Louisville was born.